Yes, Major, I know. Convoy Circus Tiger was destroyed on high road at coordinates K-7. They must be zeroed in on a quarter mile of that bend. Now, I'm holding Crazy Fox at B-8. Sir, it'd be useless to start Crazy Fox until that gun is knocked out. They know we're roadbound. Yes, I realize that. I'm sending out a team now. Yes, sir, we'll roll the convoy at 0700. Regardless, yes, sir. Well, there it is. They put a cork in our bottle right there. And these supplies must reach Dog Company within 24 hours if they're to hold that ground. No chance for an airdrop to Dog Company? That's all they'd do is drop it. The country's too rough. Can't get a chopper in either. And if we could, it'd take too long to move this much gas and ammo. We're stuck with it. Our only chance, their only chance, is to get that gun and start these trucks moving. The only way to get it is to go up after it. Lieutenant Collins, you and Sergeant Walsh take four men from the convoy. Find that gun and put it out of action. It should be here. Just like that? You must hit it before 1000, because this convoy will roll at 0700. Those three hours will put us in their range. Now, after the hit, if you can make it, come down to the road. It's approximately two miles and pretty rough. If you can't join us in time, there's a small trail. Head west from this ridge. That trail was probably used to supply this gun. We found it in aerial photos. Now, it runs to this road. Such as it is, follow it. It'll lead you to Field Hospital 101. You can get transportation back to base. Questions? No, sir. Sergeant? Do we have any more information as to their firepower? The report said heavy mortar fire. No doubt machine guns, too, though it isn't mentioned. Now, I know this is sketchy, but it's all we've got. Thank you, sir. Get your men, Lieutenant. You'd better leave as soon as possible. It'll be daylight in an hour. Yes, sir. Lieutenant, this is going to be a tough one. I think we better take the corp... I'll pick my men, Sergeant. I thought we'd play it safe and pick... Yeah. Figures you'd play it safe. I don't know what you're talking about. In your mess kit, you don't. I'm talking about you leaving that patrol at Tegu. Scouting on your own, wasn't it? At least that's what the report said. Every man in that patrol was wiped out except five. You and these four. Lieutenant, if we miss taking that gun, every man in this patrol will roll right into it. These are the men I want, Sergeant. I have them assembled with full pack. Rations for two days and two canteens. Fall in in ten minutes. Yes, sir. Oh, and Sergeant, I'll get that gun. You can bet your life on it. I am, sir. Collins, you were pretty rough on the sergeant. Maybe not rough enough, sir. Is that the reason you selected those particular men? I know what you're thinking, Captain, but these are the only men I've got. None of the rest have had any combat experience. They've hardly been off the base after dark. They haven't even zeroed in on their rifles yet. All right, Lieutenant. Good enough. Yes, sir. Walker. Yeah, Sarge. You'd like to take a little walk? What's up? You got the word Circus Tiger Convoy was hit. Yeah. Well, G2 thinks they got a fix on it. We're going to climb up there and knock it out so these trucks can get rolling. Here. Have these men ready to jump off in 10 minutes. Full field packs, two days of ration, two canteens of water. The works. Why these men, Sarge? The lieutenant picked them. Figures. Let's get to it, huh? Okay, Sarge. Hey! You! Cougar! Hmm? Hmm? Let's go! Hmm? Fall in in 10 minutes. Full pack. Draw rations for two days. Two days? Two canteens of water and I'd scrounge all the ammunition I could carry. Where are we going? Lieutenant's got a little job for us. What kind of job? G2 found the gun that's got this road bottled up. We gotta go up and get it. That's a little job. Okay, snap to it. Oh, we'll be there. But not just in case we're not. You just go right on off and leave us. It'd serve us right. Be at the lead jeep in 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah. Ah, I signed on to ride shotgun for these trucks. And I underlined ride. Come on, let's go. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. We'd all had our share of Jap beer. We decided to borrow this jeep and spend the rest of the night in Nakabashi. Well, fellas, you wouldn't believe it.
Thank you. Reed. Just a second. So we took the six broads. Be ready to march in ten minutes. Full pack. Two days rations, two canteens. Well, if it isn't Mammy's little helper. <laughs> you want me to bring my rubbers and mufflers, too? You can go barefoot so far as I'm concerned, but you will be back in two canteens of water. You are a lustrous leader. Lieutenant Collins. Lieutenant Collins, the breaker? By the time we get back, we'll all be civilians. Okay, night fighter. You know, one of these nights, you're going to get all the fight you can handle. Ten minutes. Bucking for another stripe. <laughs> you know, I always thought Clyde Beatty was brave, putting both lions and tigers in the same cage. Lieutenant beats them all. Yeah, well, he just better forget his rifle and bring a chair and a whip. <laughs> May turn out to be a dark night. Let's go. string in the book to get with the motor poo. And now I gotta climb all over this thinking mountain looking for a gun. Oh, how are you ever gonna find it in all this empty? Oh, you'll recognize it when you see it. It's got Russian writing on it. <laughs> All right, men, we'll rest here for 10 minutes. Eat if you want to. No fire. Hey. Hey, Sarge. How much more of this mountain we got to climb? Well, there's a lot of mountain we haven't used. A lot of mountain. Hey, Sarge, can't you talk to the lieutenant? That gun's on the other side of the ridge. Small fire for coffee would be safe. I'll try. <sighs> lieutenant. Sergeant. This has been a tough march, and we still got a long ways to go. The men could sure use some hot coffee. Now, don't you think a small fire's safe, considering how far off the gun is? You may be right, Sergeant. But like I said, no fires. Well, Lieutenant, no fires, Sergeant. Yes, sir. <laughs> Lieutenant says no fire. Where I come from, you couldn't eat in the same restaurant with me. And just think, we might share the same grave. You two guys knock it off. That war's over. Let's try to be around when this one is. Pay no attention to Rev there, Sarge. Every time his mouth gets some gear, his brakes fail. Whew. Uh, it's 
that a Bible? Hmm? No, not exactly. It's a prayer book. A uh, prayer book, huh? Mm-hmm. Huh. Is today Sunday? No, I don't think so. Thought they save that stuff for Sunday. Some do. I took a fling at religion, what? A fling? Yeah, I was, uh, I was back home, I was out of work. Oh, oh, I was flat broke, you know, nothing in sight. And, uh, oh, I never was one much for church going, you know, but, uh, I was, I was walking down this street one rainy night and just to, to get in out of the rain, well, I walked in this neighborhood pool hall, you know, to kind of <laughs> pick up a little change there. And it, uh, it must have been fate, because I was sitting there, I picked up this magazine off the chair that was next to me. I was thumbing through it. You, you know how you do it. That's when it hit me. A large prayer. Big, bold type. I knew right then that that was it. Well, well, I, I borrowed some money, see, and I bought one of these machines that Stamps a large prayer on a penny, and oh, hey, things was going great. Fairs, carnival. But then, uh, I stopped by the FBI. I FBI? Yeah, they, uh, they said, defacing United States currency is a federal offense. Sort of shakes one's faith in the freedom of religion, doesn't it? Yeah. Oh, another month and I'd have been set. Oh, hey, look, I still carry one. Uh, for luck, you know. I, uh, right there. I'm out there. <laughs> oh. Hey. Sarge, you've been through this kind of stuff before. Now, what's it gonna be like if we have to start shooting? That's hard to say. Well, uh, I, I've been in action before, but I've never had to shoot right at anybody. Just like war games, only we use real bullets. So are the gooks. Well, I, I, I just hope I don't freeze up. Back home in school before a game started, <laughs> football, you know, I get so scared I, I couldn't move. <laughs> Once the game started, well, I, I was okay. You'll be all right. I, I ain't worried about getting hurt. I just don't want to goof up and cause anybody else to get it. You should have joined the band, boy. Don't worry about it. Hey, Thad. Yeah? Now, supposing we find this gun. Now, supposing we luck out and blast it. Then what? We're going to join a convoy? Well, that depends. On what? Time. Time? What time? After we get the gun, and if there's still time, we can cut back to the main road and pick up the convoy. And if not? Well, they say we can cut back over the ridge, pick up a supply trail, and make our way to a field hospital. Field hospital out here? That's right, 101. Hmm. Well, that'll be better than joining up with dog company. They must be getting the hell shot out of them. All right, men, let's go. <laughs> I'll be a rice paddy, Daddy. This Korea's got the highest mountains in the shortest minutes.
I wish somebody would tell them gooks this is a police action. They think it's a war. Sergeant, you just say so. But there's no cover here. They'll shoot right down our throats. Now, look, I can search... You can stay right with me, Sergeant. There'll be no scouting on your own this time. Cover me. Now! Make sure that piece is out of action. These guys are so little. How the hell did they get this thing up here? gun jam, Lieutenant. You dirty coward. You lousy, dirty coward. By us, Sarge. What gives? You're our leader now. Yeah, I know. We, uh, we won't be able to make the road and meet that convoy, will we? Doesn't look like it. And in that case, we won't be able to join up with them to go to Dog Company. Now, that'd just break your heart, wouldn't it? <laughs> Sarge, you ought to know by now that I ain't no hero. Now, this road we're supposed to find. You know where it is? Where it is? Hell, I don't know if it is. Here's a dog tag, Sarge. You keep him, will you, Corporal? Yes, sir.
Hey, Sarge, look. Hot damn, we can ride back to camp. I think it Rundy wouldn't leave it out here. Well, let's have a look. It's a she. I'll bet anything. She's alive. I can feel her heartbeat. Is, is, is she gonna die? How should I know? You, you, you gotta get those wet clothes off her. She'll get pneumonia. See if there's any dry blankets in that ambulance. Don't you think we could just put the dry blankets around her? Uh, not over those wet things. Well, I can't take her clothes off. She's a, she's a grown woman. Well, if you don't do something pretty soon, she's gonna be a dead one, too. Well, I can't take them off. Well, you're our leader. You can order somebody to do it. Okay. Now, get in there and see if you can get that ambulance out of the water and make it run. All right, the rest of you guys get out of here and go help him. Oh, put your head down. Uh, Sarge, I could, uh, I'll take care of this. That nurse. <laughs> She's something. Can you imagine having her around all the time? All those days and nights. Yeah. Yes, sir. This might prove to be a very interesting trip. I've heard about them babes with their motel on wheels. And this one looks like she's been around pretty good. You judge everyone by your standards? Standards? What do you mean, standards? You don't see no halo around this Iron Angel, do you? You bet you don't. No, sir. What other reason would a good-looking babe like that be mixed up in a place like this? I've seen a lot of camp followers in my time, but that one is an extreme case. That is a war follower. Why don't you save it? And, and, and in them hospitals in Japan, boy. I've had those guys tell me, them babes come into the ward right in the middle of the night. Wild.
Let the Sarge speak for himself, Slick Sleeve. Look, Motormouth, you ain't got nothing but black marks where Stripes once was. <laughs> Sergeant! She's coming, too. Okay, now. Just take it easy. I'm Sergeant Walsh. We were headed for the 101st Field Hospital when we saw your ambulance. 101st? That's right. My clothes? What happened to my uniform? Well, we, when we found you, ma'am, you were nearly drowned, soaked through. First thing I thought of was to take your clothes off. I mean, it was the only thing I could think of. Well, oh. what I mean is we just couldn't let you stay in that wet uniform. You... You might catch pneumonia for sure, maybe die. Oh, thanks very much. Now will you give me my uniform and a little privacy? Your uh, uniform, Lieutenant. Lieutenant? Second Lieutenant Laura Fleming, 101st Field Hospital, 288 Medical. We, we built a, a kind of a room, sort of, over there for the lady. Inside the ambulance, still pretty wet. This is Lieutenant Fleming. Lieutenant? Yeah, she's a nurse in the 101st Field Hospital. All right. That's, that's fine. That's just where we were heading. Uh, there it is. Oh. Ooh. That just might turn black. Any more damage? You ought to know. Uh, think you might like to have some dinner? Yes. Thanks, I would. Heat must have got him calling field rations dinner, but uh, I always say share and share alike. A little fire, Sarge? Hot soup and coffee? Yeah, okay, a small one. Dinner in five minutes, Lieutenant. Would you leave me alone, please? Oh, yes, ma'am, Lieutenant. Get back to your coffee before I boil you in it. What's the matter? Can a fella have a little fun? If you can't touch, you can look. That coffee's strong enough to knock a hoot off an owl. Tension! Lieutenant, dinner is served. Thank you. <clears throat> Lieutenant, if I may ask, what are you doing out in this area alone? I wasn't alone. I had a driver and a patient that I was taking to the 101st. Where are they? Dead. Dead? Planes hit us as we were crossing some open country. They came in low. First one hit my patient, and the second one my driver. He was dead in an hour. I didn't know what to do. My training hadn't covered any of this. I wrapped them in blankets, I marked them, and I have their tags. It was getting pretty dark, and I started driving. I tried to make it back to the hospital, but I became lost, I guess. Suddenly there was a, a bump, like I hit something. I don't remember anything else. Well, that's no job for a woman anyway. Oh, that's nothing against you, Lieutenant. I realize that these nurses in the hospitals take temperatures, write letters, hold their hands and talk to them, but a woman's got no business in the combat area. It's not right. The guy that sent you out here ought to have his commission cut off. For your information, Sergeant, we don't just write letters and hold hands. I'm a surgical nurse, trained to operate in combat areas. And that's where most of the men are wounded. Running, Sergeant. Lieutenant. 
Lieutenant, it's a good 10 miles yet from here at the hospital. Do you mind if me and my men ride along? You're welcome to ride, but not your weapons. What do you mean, not our weapons? It's regulations. What regulations? The Geneva Agreement definitely states... Or be That's ridiculous. It's stupid. It's... Uh... Regulations. Come here, Lieutenant. Look. Do you think the lousy commie pilot that put those holes in there gives a damn about your regulations? This is not a Red Cross to them, it's a bullseye. Lieutenant! Have you forgotten about the two men you buried from this, this iron angel of yours? I'm sorry, Sergeant. Follow her, Sergeant. That ambulance doesn't have enough gasoline in it to fill your lighter. Okay, round up the men. Okay, Sergeant. All right, fellas, let's go. She took the road to the right. She's heading away from the hospital. Well, nothing worse than an intelligent woman who doesn't know anything. You'd think she'd carry a compass. Well, she don't need no compass, you know. All you gotta do is look at a tree. And if there's no moss, you see, you know... You know that... what? Well, well, see, you know this... I wonder which way that road the goes. West side. Well, out to a gas it's station, that's for sure. It, it grows. Are you positive yeah. that tank was near empty? Good shot. Well, if there isn't a gas station in those rocks, I'd say she's pretty close to walking right now. Now, let's go. Take this. And it, the sun, you know, comes in from the west when it's going down. And uh, the, it kind of grows, and you, you look at it, and uh, you, you... Well, it's it, <laughs> kind of scientific. It, you know, it's hard to explain. If I had a tree here, I'd show you. This uh, from the west side, you see?
Well, you sure get a lot of mileage out of an empty tank, all in the wrong direction. The hospital's back that way, at least 15 miles. Oh, I'm sorry to have inconvenienced you. You needn't have followed. Well, it's just as well you did run out of gas. Another few miles and you'd been giving first aid to the gooks. I said I was sorry. All right, let's take a break. Uh, uh. Uh. I ain't no farmer. But I'll bet on this stuff you couldn't raise hell with a pint of whiskey. You'd be surprised what a man could raise on this, given time and tools. If we keep sitting around here like ducks on a pond, we're going to become part of this real estate. You better get off your feet. We're going to start walking in 20 minutes. Hey, Sarge. You know, I was thinking. We keep walking and we miss that the hospital. We're going to walk right into the ocean. It's over 80 miles and it's a yellow sea. Yellow sea? Hmm. Figures you'd know. That big mouth of yours is going to get you in trouble one of these days, Reb. I'll uh, have the coffee ready in a minute, Sergeant. Hey, excuse me, Lieutenant. Mind if I join you? Not at all. I was kind of rough on you a minute ago. I'd like to apologize. No need. I wasn't very cooperative or understanding myself. I haven't spoken to a woman for so long, I, uh, I guess I've forgotten how. Sergeant, are you down on all women in uniform or all women? Well, neither one, really. But you know, this is a lousy, messy business. And I don't think they should complicate it more by putting women in the combat area. I'm not a woman, not here. I'm just a person who has a skill that's needed. If there were men available, they'd be here, but there aren't. Would you deny the hundreds of boys a chance to live just to keep women out of the field? Hundreds? We got thousand dying, Lieutenant. And even the few that might be saved, you deny them that chance just to satisfy your manly ego? Sergeant, do you know the feeling one has in helping to save a life? Do you? No, I guess I don't. I'm sorry, Sergeant. I, I shouldn't be talking to you this way. You're really sold on this uh, Florence Nightingale business, aren't you? I guess I am. My father was a doctor in a little town in Michigan. First, he wanted me to be a boy, although he never said so. Then he wanted me to be a doctor. That he said plenty. But he had to settle on me being a nurse. I'm very happy. It's very rewarding. It must be. I was a good nurse back home. I wanted so desperately to be of service out here, really of help. Look, I've lost my patient. My driver was killed. My ambulance wrecked. I've endangered your life and the lives of your men. I guess I fouled up the detail. Isn't that what they say? Well, that's not quite what we say, Lieutenant, but then you shouldn't blame yourself too much. These things are going to happen no matter how hard we try. They just seem to happen. You know, back home, people are being killed every day just crossing the streets. Here, everything is so noisy, so compressed, so close. But then you can't let it bother you. Are you going ahead with your nursing career when you get back home? I don't know much else. Well, I'm in the same boat. What did you do before the war? Oh, about the same as I do now, drive a truck. Oh, a truck driver? <laughs> Not very glamorous or rewarding, is it? I didn't mean that. <laughs> well, you'd be right, it isn't. Must be interesting, though, traveling through the country. Back home, that is. Well, I was driving relief out of Chicago. Then I finally got a regular run between Chicago and Denver. Before I knew it, I was wheeling a 6-6 behind the Red Ball Express trying to catch up with Pat. I saw the country all right, but not much of it back home. Hey, Sarge, coffee's ready. I'll bring it if you like. Be right there. No, Lieutenant. With your permission, I'd like to use the soft seat and the Iron Angel while we still got it. Well... No weapons. Okay. Well, what do you know?
Sergeant, I meant to tell you before. I thought I saw something up in the hill. Could have been my imagination. Well, I don't figure them this far down yet. Yeah, it'd be the same old story. Them on the high ground, us on the low. Mm. Oh, boy. <sighs> Aren't you going to drink your coffee? I'd like a nice, cold beer. I'd give a much beer ration for one more night in Itabashi. Barefoot gish you're running up and down your back, isn't it? I'd like a nice, cold beer. I hope I never get that thirsty. <clears throat> huh. It's chow time. Come on. Our buffet, garçon. We thank you. <laughs> yes, sir. Oh, of course, Henry, the very best table in the house. <laughs> yes, how nice of you to say so. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Oh, lovely. My compliments to the chef. <laughs> lovely, yes, delicious looking. Yes, sir, right there. Uh, well, chopped eggs with bacon. <whistles> ah, chopped bacon with eggs. Ah, uh, lovely. Bull. Beyond the cubes. <whistles> yes, right there. Uh, Oh, yes, 
Oh, right there. Crap. Once, just once, I'd like to open one of these things and find a ham sandwich. Next war, I'm gonna... There's not gonna be a next war. There is, if they keep feeding us these damn K-rations. Hey, Sarge, company's coming. <laughs> So go give him, they got a machine gun. Down. You haven't got a chance. One. What? You. Me. Everybody get in the ambulance on the move. You stand out front. Go on. What? Stand out front. Do as you're told. Button. Great. Just watch them. And take off that helmet. My helmet? I said take it off. Get my kit and the canteen. Anything I can do? Nothing. Just go on away. Leave me alone. She loves me now. She loves me. She loves me. <laughs> hey, sir. Oh, sorry. Yeah, we got them all. Hmm. And this one? Right through the heart. See if you can figure out a way to get the gas out of this one into the Iron Angel. You bet, sir. No problem. No problem at all there, you know. Take care of these. No problem at all. Let's see, canteen. Repeat. Hmm. <laughs> yes. <clears throat> no problem at all, it's hard. No problem. Right in there. Oh. Take it easy. All right. Oh, my God, no. Oh! Woo! Yeah. Yeah, this ought to do it. What's that? Well, it's a tube off a plasma bottle I found over in the ambulance. What happened to our friends there? Oh. How's Corporal doing? Nurse is getting him fixed up best she can. Yeah, boy, he's lucky she's here. Mm -hmm. If she hadn't been here, this never would have happened. Look, she's just trying to do a job. Will you lay off? <clears throat> oh, that's the worst gas I ever tasted. You talk like an expert. 
Yeah, you know, I was always too shy to hitchhike. What do you think of this little pinup I found? Well, Lieutenant Collins. Now, what about it? I found it in the Iron Angel. But don't you get it? That nurse was engaged or uh, something to the lieutenant. And she doesn't know he's... Uh... How could she? Boy, that's tough. After all she's been through. Ah, she'll get over it. They always do. We gonna tell her? I couldn't. Well, the way I figured, the sergeant ought to tell her. After all, he was the one... Hey, I, why don't you just keep your foul mouth closed for a change? We all saw it, didn't we? Sergeant? Yes, Lieutenant? I think you'd be more comfortable on the stretcher. Would you take care of it, please? A couple of you guys grab a litter and give me a hand. Go. this pin up in the ambulance. I think it's hers. I know this has been an awful strain on you, but we'll be out of here soon. It's too bad you had to find out this way. I'm awfully sorry. How? When did it happen? Go on, tell us, Sarge. The lieutenant wants to know what happened. Get off of my back, Rib. Ask him, Lieutenant. Ask him what Collins' last words were. So help me, I'll kill you. Why change the pattern? Sarge! Sarge! Come here, quick! Look, Sarge, I found their map. Yeah, what about it? Well, this is the road the convoy's on. And you see this marker here? That's the gun emplacement that we hit. Yeah, that's what I thought. So, if this kind of marking means a gun emplacement, then this one up here is just like it. It must mean another one, one we didn't know about. Yeah, it must be right on the road. I'll bet this trail leads up to that gun. It must be where these guys came from. Well, if this jeep can make it down here, the Iron Angel should be able to make it up there, all right. Yeah, but can we make it in time? Well, I don't know. The convoy was rolling at 0700. They figure to be in range of this gun emplacement at 10 hundred. That's three hours distance from here to here. And the road after that is full of all sorts of cutbacks and a steep grade. They'd be lucky to average maybe uh, three mile an hour? Well, I don't know. It's three hours from this point to this point. It's twice the distance from this point to this point or six hours, or maybe more. That gives us two hours to get there, two hours to get that gun. Well, where do you think we are now? Well, we've been traveling parallel to that range. We're three or four miles from the river. I'd say we're right about here. Can we make it in time? We've got to try. How much gas were you able to get in? Well, this is a uh, uh, fourth helmet full, Sarge. That about does it. OK, put this thing away. Yes, sir. Lieutenant, we'll have to take your ambulance. What about the corporal? Corp, we just found out there's another gun emplacement up the road that we didn't know anything about. If we don't get her to figure out a way to stop Crazy Fox, they'll tear him to pieces. What are we waiting for? Tough ride. Think you can make it? I'll make it if you make it, Sarge. Good boy. All right, let's go. Buttons, bring my gear. Go! Buttons!
you doing, Corporal? He's lost a lot of blood. Well, you stay right here and don't move. We're clear shot at the bend. It must be somewhere over that rise. Yeah, but where? Oh, I wish these gooks would put street numbers on their maps. Now, let's go. Take it easy, Sergeant. Where's the fellas? They're looking for the gun. Oh. We thought a lot of him too, ma'am. I heard you talking to the Sarge and the Rib. I think you ought to know that Lieutenant Collins was a good man, a very good soldier. But what the Rib said just wasn't true. About the Sarge, I mean. Sarge did everything he could to help. It wasn't anybody's fault, really. It's just the way they get bad luck, that's all. Just bad luck. But why would Reb say... Ah, uh, don't try to figure him out, ma'am. If he wasn't chipping at the sergeant, he'd be making remarks about me. He calls himself Reb, you know. Make people think he's from the South, so that when he makes digs at me, people won't blame him personally. You know, like it's expected of him, kind of spread the blame around. Well, I looked up his record. He was born and raised in Iowa. He didn't mean to hurt you, really. He's just striking out. I sort of feel sorry for him myself. Anybody that full of hate must be awfully miserable. See anything? Uh, sure don't. Wish I was sure they didn't see us. Can you see the sergeant, lieutenant? I can't see them. We've gone over the ridge. Might be looking for that well-known needle. God, I hope they find it. Well, once those gooks spot that convoy, they'll open up, then they'll get them. It might be too late. Might be. Maybe if I got over behind that ledge and kicked off a few rounds, they might open up and show us their position. Well, just knowing where they are won't do us any good. And getting ourselves pinned down won't get that gun. We've got to move in. Or they won't be able to see us. Let's move! I sure wish I knew what they were doing. I can't see them. You know, Lieutenant, if you went up by that rock over there, you might be able to see them. Be careful, though. Oh, please, Lieutenant. Please. I can take the Iron Angel and draw their fire. I can, I can make them open up. We just got to get that gun. Cough, listen. The Sarge said the Iron Angel was a real bullseye. We can draw their fire.
Hey, Sarge. You misread that map. There's no gun emplacement up there. There she goes again. Is that idiot doing what I think she's doing? There's the gun! Go! had enough. Don't make it tougher. <laughs> I never thought I'd want to talk to a chaplain. Say, you still got that Bible? It's, a, it's in the ambulance. I'll go get it. Uh, wait, no. Maybe I've still got one. Yeah. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be. I can't make a, I can't make out the word. I, I guess it didn't fit too good. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Things. Never was much machine. Anyway, I guess I'll just have to.
Sorry, Webb. How's your shoulder? Fine, Sarge. Thanks. Good. I, uh, I don't want to sound corny, but I, I know what that RN means. Real nerve. Thanks a lot. Hi, hero. Hi, Rumi. Mo? Thanks. Looks like you bought yourself one. Yeah, I got myself a ticket home, too. Man, a little scratch like that's a round trip. <laughs> Wouldn't you know? Come on, Sarge, we're going. Well, good luck, Lieutenant. Hope to see you again. So long, soldier. Will I see you again? You might. It's a small war. <laughs> <laughs>